Good morning, everybody. Uh, or let's say good morning to the ones in Europe and Africa. Um, have a nice lunchtime in the Arabia and Middle East. And uh, good afternoon to the ones in Asia. So again, for, for me, it's always a little bit complicated uh, what to say. So I just say hello, maybe. Uh, that works at every time of the day. I'm very happy to welcome you to the first uh, talk. We have innovation talk we have in 2021. Uh, we all had probably one of the most interesting years behind us. Um, I, I heard there is a, a Chinese curse which says, may you live in interesting times. Um, I, I think we really live in interesting times. We also saw that uh, a little virus uh, could change everything we are thinking about. How do we sales? How do we do marketing? How our world, our private world is changed with homeschooling and closage of stores and all this stuff. So we really had a change over the last year. But um, what we, on the other side, we de developed things over the last year, um, like our innovation talks. Uh, before that, there were small people, number of people gathering in Bern um for a nice um seminar which is of course really great and i'm really looking forward to see people personally again but on the other side now we have uh, 20 30 50 sometimes even 100 people coming together in online webinars and online conferences and online dialogues which gives a lot of more people the chance to to attend and i'm really happy that we have this chance Saying that, I would like to give over to Olivier from the UPU, um, saying well, uh, hello to you from our host, Olivier. Hello, and thanks, Martin, for uh, int the introduction. Um, hello, everyone, and a very happy new year. Uh, we still are within the time frame where we can say happy new year. So happy new year to uh, all of you. Um, and welcome to this um, third uh, session of the uh, innovation talk series that we have uh, started with uh, Martin uh, last year. Um, and, and this session and the, the whole series of webinars is organized under the umbrella of the Direct Marketing Advisory Board of the UPU of the Universal Postal Union. And uh, I wish to, um, to say hello to all the members of the DMAB that are present today. And uh, as you may know, the DMAB, the Direct Marketing Advisory Board, is a group of postal operators and private sector uh, industries and, and, and uh, companies that are interested in developing direct marketing as a postal product. Um, so we're doing a number of activities. One, one uh, work stream that we have is to organize those uh, webinars uh, since last year with the support of Martin that I wish to thank again for for his support in, in organizing and, and running those, those very successful uh, webinars. And I'm very excited by today's topic. Um, I'm going to be talking about uh, data and, uh, and the quality of data. Uh, and as we, we often hear in the direct marketing world and, and beyond, uh, data is gold. And, and uh, I, I would add that uh, in that context where we said data is gold, postal operators are basically sitting on a gold mine. Um, and they have to be aware of that. They have to understand that they are really sitting on the gold mine. They are for, for decades uh, uh, dealing with addresses. They have a knowledge of communities that no other uh, uh, economic operator uh, is enjoying. And so they're really sitting on, 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 the, on the gold mine. And, and I, I, I'm sure that after today's session, we will better understand um, and know more about how to leverage uh, that position and how uh, we can use uh, as a postal uh, sector that gold mine we're, we're sitting on. So I'm extremely pleased to welcome uh, Henning uh, Wagenfeld uh, to, to that uh, webinar uh, as, a, as a keynote speaker. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Henning, for taking the time. I, Henning is, is one of our postal colleagues, I would say. He's, he's within a, a Dutch post uh, and, and specifically within the unit or, or subsidiary that is dealing with, uh, with addresses, and, and Henning is is the director for, for sales in that specific line of business of Dutch Post. So thank you very much, Henning, for taking the time to share your experience with us today and, and your views on data, on addressing, on, on data quality, on how important it is to have a proper strategy, a proper uh, way of dealing with data, using data uh, for, for thriving your uh, postal business. So thank you again. And uh, I wish you all a very, very good uh, uh, webinar. And, and I give you the ball back, Martin, if I may say so. Thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, Olivier. 
thank a lot to you and thanks for organizing this and uh, uh, giving everybody the chance to attend. Yes, Henning Wagenfeld from Deutsche Post Address, which is a subsidiary of the German Post. Um, and he will speak about today data quality unwrapped. Is it worth the time? And uh, to take one thing before, it is worth the time. Uh, um, I, I, I don't think that I really uh, that this is really a secret. I myself, I am uh, have a background in information technology, and in information technology, you always speak about the the principle of garbage in, garbage out. So if you have bad data, whatever you do with it, the result will not be good because if the data is bad, every analysis you make or you are making is bad as well. So from my point of view, data quality is worth the time. Sometimes it's not as sexy as we would like to have it, uh, but it is worth our time. So I will give over to Henning now. He is director of sales and account management with Deutsche Post address. And he is one of the persons I know who is not only, uh, has not only a very, very deep knowledge about data quality, especially from a postal point of view, but as well has this view from an international point of view. So it's a good combination for today, I think. And um, Anning, the floor is yours. Um, switch over to your presentation, and we are happy to have you here. Have a lot of fun with us. Thank you and very to much. Everybody, yes. To everybody, of course, you will answer questions afterwards. We have a dialogue session afterwards. So whenever you have a question, just put it in the chat, and uh, we will be happy to answer that afterwards. Absolutely. Henning, up to you. Martin, thank you very much. Also, Olivier, thank you very much for um, inviting me, having me in your um, in your um, uh, in your one of your meetings. Uh, it's a big honor for me, and I'm very happy that so many of you dialed in. Uh, obviously, it's a topic that's uh, quite interesting. Martin just said it's not sexy, but I learned from Olivier. Maybe it's a gold mine. Um, uh, maybe that's the reason why so many of you are dialing in. Um, I'm just trying to start a presentation before I say some words about um, myself. Um, Martin, just let me know if this is, if you can see the presentation right now. Um, it's, today's topic is about data quality and data quality unwrapped. So the question Martin already asked, is it worth its time? Um, regarding the agenda, yes? I think we, we do not see the presentation yet. You just have to, to put on the, on the screen sharing mode in this. Yes, now no. we, we see your screen and now go on presentation mode so and then we can now. start. Perfect now. So as you can see, I'm more like with addresses um, and not so much into IT. <laughs> um, just a quick um, overview um, on today's agenda. Try to keep it short because the, the topic of data quality in total is such a big topic. You can We, we, we could uh, talk about it um, the whole day, but... Um, as I learned, we have uh, 45 minutes today. So I want to start with a short introduction. I uh, want to talk uh, with you about the six dimensions of data quality. I uh, want to ask uh, reasons why. Um, why is data quality changing? Why is it so important? Um, I want to show you some risks and also some chances that come with um, correct or incorrect data. I um, would like to give you some recommendations and um, also show some use cases from my daily business, some customer experience I've made um, on a national and international basis. So whenever you have questions, um, just feel free or otherwise um, after, um, after the lecture. Um, yes, introducing myself. Um, my name is Henning Wagenfeld. I'm uh, 42 years old. Um, I'm a director of sales and account management uh, with Deutsche Post Adresse. I'm going to explain Deutsche Post Adress a bit later. Um, I currently live in Sweden. That's why probably you guys can see um, there's a lot of snow in the back. Um, uh, I live here with my family and two children um, in, in Sweden. Also due to Corona, we have this uh, special situation as all of you guys um, probably have. Um, my second home is uh, Munich. In Germany, this is due to the fact that uh, most of my business is done uh, in Germany. Our headquarters is in Germany too, not in Munich, but I like Munich. Um, and that's why I'm traveling. Um, I'm really traveling a lot, um, meeting my customers. Um, I graduated university, um, started my business in a mail order, um, mail order company, building up the mail order company in the UK. That was a nice, um, nice entrance. And after that, I um, switched um, to a company. It's called Avato IZ Direct. 
Uh, it's a part of Bertelsmann, um, and this was the time where I got in contact with data, data management and sales. Um, since uh, 2010, I'm a member of Deutsche Post Address, so it's now 11 years. My was my anniversary in January. Uh, my 11th year time flies, um, and um, I'm now leading the national and also the international sales and the account management team um, uh, in uh, Germany. Um, yeah, it's Deutsche Post, uh, Deutsche Post Address. Who are we? I just mentioned it's a, it's a rather small company. Um, it's um, we are market leader um, and we are focused on the on topics of address updating and address research um, a slight difference i'm going to explain later on um, a bit more about these differences. so deutsche post address um, we are a joint venture <laughs> we're a joint venture um, of deutsche post dhl so the big leading logistic company which probably all of you know and uh, bertelsmann the um, share is about 51 percent deutsche post um, dhl and only 49% Bertelsmann. So it's a combination of two strong companies um, bringing in um, both their shares and uh, the strength they have. <clears throat> but as we have 51%, all of my presentation, um, everything that we have and that we use is um, just uh, being presented in the, the corporate design uh, in the yellow color that is our, our main color. Um, maybe if you just have other questions, it's like it's our business launched um, 1994, um, for example. <clears throat> Sorry, we have uh, 140 employees. Um, it's a highly profitable business that we're dealing with. Just learned the expression gold mine. <clears throat> it's maybe not a big gold mine, but it has um, a huge um, profit rate. The profit rate is between 30 to 40 percent. So everything that deals with data is highly profitable um, as long or as soon as it's been automated. Uh, so I can highly recommend. Um, now I've prepared a small, um, a small video for you um, as an introduction, just to um, to start uh, to start off. Um, it's a video from uh, Tesa, a global player. And it's showing, and this is the main reason why I want to use this video, and it's showing the main four main categories uh, within a company uh, where data quality plays a significant role. Every um, process at TESA needs data. This data contains information about our products, customers, providers, and our staff, who spend a good amount of their time generating and editing data. And so, the right product can reach the right customer at the right time. The correctness of our master data is at the core of our ongoing processes. But a single moment of distraction can leave the door open for gremlins to sneak into our system. If the accuracy about the features of a product isn't controlled in the master data, these gremlins can cause confusion. Incorrect master data about a product's weight, for example, can lead to unexpected difficulties. Also, shipping addresses must be checked thoroughly. In the worst cases, faulty master data can cause the loss of an entire shipment. That's why we're introducing Tessa's data management to prevent sneaky gremlins from causing trouble in the future. But even as these decrease in number, it's our job to minimize the gremlins before they become monsters. We're all a part of the solution. If we reach high quality master data practices, gremlins won't sneak into our processes. We want to create a solid base for this goal together with your support. Tessa. Tessa. We master data. Thanks, Henning. That was the video. You just have to switch over to your presentation again, and you are set. Yes. Henning, we can't hear you at the moment. Sorry, I muted. Uh, I was coughing. That's why I didn't want to annoy you. Um, do you see the the new uh, the, the the next slide with the four um, main categories?
Yes, we saw it. Everything is also yeah. right. Okay, so sorry. sorry. Again. <laughs> okay. So um, yes, I want to show you the the the, the, um, the main message from this video is that there are four main categories uh, when it comes to data quality. It's about products, it's about customers, and it's about suppliers, and it's about your staff. Um, so, and as I just said in my introduction, the topic of data quality can be huge. So let's today let's focus on um, on the customer on the customer data. Um, when we talk about um, data quality, what I just mean um, by keeping it simple is the ability of a certain, I'm talking about the ability of a certain data set to serve or support a special need um, in a special context. So this has to be something we keep in mind. It's not about collecting data like, like crazy. It's about collecting the right data for the right purpose. And today, um, I would like to focus on um, on customer data. Um, what some of you guys probably all experienced is um, um, talking to your customers, and these customers are struggling uh, with uh, maybe low or unsatisfying response rate on marketing campaigns. Um, maybe they are struggling with unpaid invoices due to an undeliverable or incorrect postal address, or maybe the address, an incorrect address was used in order to cause fraud. You probably have customers that are struggling with high fees for postal or parcel returns due to incorrect addresses, or you have customers that are struggling uh, with a number of inactive clients in their database. And on top, What's, uh, what's also struggling is the, uh, the legal re requirements. Um, I'm very sure that um, um, these legal requirements uh, need a special attention in each and every country. Um, we have the GDPR, we have KYC regulations, and all these regulations, they make it a bit uh, complex and they have to, um, they have to be attended in the, correct, in the correct way. So um, when it comes to... Um, data quality and in order to avoid all these um, struggles sometimes the answer of how to avoid struggles um, is as easy as it is. Um, I always talk about the road um, to correct data. Um, this road might be a little bit rocky, a little bit bumpy, but if you just keep in mind that there are six stops or six dimensions um, within this road, it's quite easy um, to, um, to stay on track. So let's talk about these um, six, uh, the six dimensions. First dimension, um, you have to keep in mind when you think about data quality, you think about accuracy. So the question is, is the data in your system, is it accurate? Um, is the spelling accurate? Is the name accurate? Is the date of birth accurate? So everything has to be in place. And the best thing to start with Martin just said in the introduction that sometimes it's garbage in, garbage out. The best way to start with accuracy is right from the beginning. So try to make sure that the data that you enter into the system is accurate right from the beginning. The uh, second, uh, the second stop or the second dimension is completeness. So the question here is: Do you have all the information um, for each of your records? Do you have the information? Um, you need in order to process a job. For example, if you're planning an email campaign or um, an email campaign, it's important for you to have all the right email addresses in your system. If you don't have, planning an email campaign doesn't make sense. If you're pre preparing a birthday, for example, a birthday present or a birthday mailing um, for your customers, it is important that you have an accurate and complete date of birth. Just knowing that this person was born in 1978 doesn't make it a birthday mailing. So the completeness is also a huge factor when it comes to data quality. The third um, stop or the third dimension I would like to um, point out is uniformity. Um, data within your system has to be presented in the same way. So you cannot have data for example, one set of data, everything is spelled um, in capital letters and the rest is spelled in small letters. If you want to um, do an automated process, um, and this is when you start earning money, um, if you want to have automated processes, then you have to make sure that your data is uniform uh, in a uniform way. 
Um, the next stop on this bumpy road is the, the timeliness. So what you have to understand with what I mean with timeliness is that your data represents your reality. So if your data is outdated um, and it doesn't have the correct timestamp, then your reality is outdated. So be sure that you do regular address checks, regular updates, check your data regular um, on a regular basis. Otherwise, there will be a gap between the outside reality and the reality in your database. The next stop or the next dimension um, on this road is uniqueness. Ask yourself, do I have duplicate um, information in my system? This will cause a big, um, will, will have a big impact in your data quality and in following uh, workflows. Um, so you have to make sure that, um, that each and every person or each and every data is unique in your data set. Don't store data on several places. Don't have duplicate information. Um, there are several banks, several phone companies that come to um, um, a fusion and, um, and they're just trying to combine. And they have now the problem that they have data twice in their database. And they want to, what they want to achieve is they have to sort out how do I achieve the unit. Uh, sixth and uh, last um, um, dimension or the sixth stop um, is, of course, data security. Is the data that you store, is it safe, secure? Um, this has to be, uh, th this is so important um, due to all the um, um, regulation that we have, the GDPR, KYC, and all the regulations in each and every country. It's a must to be sure that data is secure. Otherwise, uh, you're getting a real, real problem. Everything has to be compliant with these um, with these laws. So really an important, it's not the last stop, but it's very, very important stop um, on this road to data quality. Um, there are some, some reasons why it's difficult um, to stay on this, um, to stay on this um, road. Um, and let me, let me show you, um, let me show you why. Um, there are many reasons why um, a data can be outdated or incorrect or incomplete. It's not just um, 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 a single fault that, that that occurs. For example, let's have a look on the German on the German market. In Germany, we see that every year about ten percent of the population is moving. So that means eight million people are moving their houses. So they're moving from one address to another address every year. About ten percent. So and if you don't be um, in time, and in, if you don't make sure um, that your data is accurate and you don't check your data um, regularly, you will lose 10% of your customers every year, I promise. The next, um, the next factor um, why data can be outdated is that people die. I mean, look at the deceased. It's in Germany, um, every year, 1.1% of the German population dies. That means 900,000 people approximately are dying. So custom, when, if your customer is struggling uh, with poor conversion rate um, on a mailing, for example, maybe you should check the data. Um, maybe he's mailing, maybe he's addressing um, dead people, which uh, of, of course will not turn into a positive conversion rate. Make sure um, you check this and the database is clear. What's also a fun fact is the territorial reforms. In Germany, maybe it's just a German problem, but uh, what we find out that there are more than 40,000 uh, changes um, of street names, postcodes, city names per year in Germany. I mean, that's crazy. Uh, we're changing names of streets. Um, we're making the Beethoven Street a Mozart Street, just for no reason. And this is one change. And we have 40,000 changes um, in Germany every year. So, of course, the data in your system, if you just if you keep, if you save the Mozart Street in your system and it's going to be changed into Beethoven Street, it's going to be outdated. It's going to be um, incorrect and you will probably get um, problems um, with delivering. Also, the reason why data is, um, is maybe um, incorrect in your system is just, um, it's just a personal issue. It's a sloppy address um, capturing. Um, this can happen in a call center, on a point of sale, in a web shop. 
So if you don't make sure that right from the beginning you capture um, the right address, um, you will have um, a constant problem um, of data quality within your, your system. Also, um, on an international basis, um, you have to understand that there are different address formats. So you can't just take your German way of thinking and thinking of address formats and say, this has to be the format for all the other countries. No, absolutely not. Be aware that there are different specific address formats um, and requirements for each and every country. So this makes um, maintaining um, data very hard. But if you know what's important for each and every country, um, uh, it's quite uh, it's quite easy and convinced. But you have to be um, aware of this of this topic. Um, also, um, the reason why um, the data is maybe incomplete is because you don't have enough mandatory data fields in your data capturing system. But if you just ask your customer what's your name uh, and you don't ask for a, a proper address, um, how do you want to make sure uh, that he's receiving um, the mailing or um, the parcel? It's not possible. You have to have a certain um, minimum mandatory data, um, uh, data set of data fields in your um, questionnaire. Um, what's next? I want, I want to give you, um, you guys are really the, the first ones to see. Um, I want to give you a sneak preview into our Deutsche Post address um, study on the movers sector um, in, in Germany. Um, so, um, as I said, 10% um, um, in Germany are moving every year, uh, which means um, a, a big impact on, on, on addresses. And, uh, but this is not the end. Um, um, from these 10%, 8% are even moving twice or even more often per year. So it's not only me moving to one place within a year, but I'm moving to one place and to another place and maybe to another place within one year. So this shows that you have to be very up-to-date, timeliness is the must-have, accuracy is a must-have. Um, and understanding this, um, um, these, these numbers show how fragile um, the sector of data quality and address quality um, can be. Um, but it's not only uh, about uh, quality um, data or changes in data and timeliness. Why is time so, uh, so important? Um, it's also um, it, um, information about data and being timely can also be a huge strategic um, advantage. Um, this statistic um, shows um, that um, 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 movers are willing to change their suppliers. So when I'm moving um, from one house to another, um, I'm willing to change my energy provider. I mean, 64% of all movers are changing the energy supplier. 41% um, are changing the um, telephone supplier when they're just moving. This means me as a business partner of a potential mover, I have to be aware that as soon as my business partner is moving, um, there's a risk of losing the business relation with him. So I have to take action. I have to understand that changing in my data is um, um, also is just a chance for me to avoid customer churn. This is a big, um, uh, big issue. So updated data can help you prevent customer churn. Just be aware of the situation that a change in data um, can have an, a big impact. What I also find very interesting is um, this, uh, this statistic. Um, it shows that um, many people forget, I mean, they're not just changing the suppliers, but they just simply forget to tell their current supplier about moving. So if you see these statistics, for example, the banks uh, on top, it says that 71% of all German movers actually tell the bank about this new situation. They inform the bank, listen, I'm moving from A to B. But this also means that 29% don't tell the bank about moving to a new address. This is crazy. And this is the top industry in Germany. I mean, take it to other industries. I take it to energy suppliers, for example. 48% only tell... Um, the energy supply about the new situation, which means that 52% don't tell. Or let's take mail order companies. I, I think mail order companies are crazy. 20, only 25% of the mail order companies um, will be informed about their customer moving. That means 75%, they lose 75% of their customers um, because the customers don't tell them. 
or what's also bad is the fundraising organizations look at this five percent on the bottom it's five percent only five percent of the members really inform the fundraising company about this uh, about this fact so fundraisers they run the risk of losing 95 percent of the customer just because this customer moves to another place this is really uh, a really really big uh, um, a, a big risk um so you have to understand that data quality is never a given thing. It requires constant work. You cannot expect your customer to tell you that um, he or she is moving. It's not, this is not, um, this is not uh, possible. Um, now I want to talk with you about um, how uh, wrong data can influence um, um, the end client. Um, What's just happening when uh, data is um, just not correct or just giving our end clients um, a hard time? Um, on this left side, you see, um, 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 I mean, you see numbers which um, underline the fact that uh, the customer is obviously still king. Um, you see, there are 78% of all consumers, they expect the retailer to solve the problem of a failed delivery. I mean, even if it's just a mistake uh, within the address, and we just learned before that mail order companies, um, um, they lose 75% of all moves. So if I don't tell my, my mail order company um, about um, being moved, um, as still 78% uh, of all um, my customers expect me to solve the problem um, of this failed delivery. And What's really, really odd is that even 54% of all retailers are willing to compensate. They are willing to compensate the delivery cost and bear the additional cost for a redelivery. And also 38% of all retailers offer a discount and, um, um, and, and want to compensate for this failed or belated delivery. So there's a, there's a problem in an address and this problem might be, might be caused by um, the, the customer itself. Um, not informing uh, the retailer or not informing uh, the company about uh, being moved. But still, um, they expect the retailer to solve the problem and the retailer is willing to solve the problem. This is really, um, this is really a, big, um, a big issue. And um, on the other hand, you can see the situation um, for, I mean, how is this situation, does this situation influence um, um, the dealer or the retailer. I mean, 66% of all retailers, they say that the correct address information is a crucial factor for their business. And they also say that these, I mean, the same amount almost says that um, having problems uh, with delivery causes significant costs. Um, the average cost based on a study from Locate is a market research from 2020 with uh, 300 retailers in Great Britain, USA and Germany and other 2000 online shops. And they're willing to, uh, and they're saying that this um, problem in address information um, causes huge costs, like an average 14 euros 87 uh, for each failed delivery. But still they're willing to compensate and they're still um, willing to treat the customer as a key. So, and having this understanding, this big impact of cost, um, I find it very irritating to see that one out of 20 deliveries um, don't reach the destination right from the beginning. So it's a huge impact um, regarding costs, additional costs, and in the end, profitability. Um, speaking about costs, um, I just want to summarize some of the numbers. I don't want to go into deep dive. Um, let's talk about the um, average cost for um, undeliverable uh, letter or mailing um, or invoice. Um, we, we, we have a rough calculation which says um, the average cost of an undeliverable letter, I mean, just in case you want to make sure there, there are follow-up processes and you still reach the customers, the average cost are between 20 to 25 euro, including a whole returns process, plus sending an updated address. Um, so there's a huge, um, there's a huge um, um, impact on the cost uh, on the cost sides. Of course, if you are willing to to do research and find the customer and um, getting reconnected to the customer, um, that's of course that's of course. Perfect. And I just 
copied uh, the numbers of the average cost for, for a fate um, parcel delivery. Again, 14 euro, um, 14 euro and um, 87 cents or $17 and um, um, 78. So this is uh, this shows that there are really um, uh, there's a big need of being productive and being having a great um, database. Otherwise, you get problems uh, with delivery, and your customer expect you to solve these problems, and which in the end turns out um, a, a big um, um, position in, on, on the cost side. So what I would say is having no data is bad, but as you can see from these numbers, having data in a bad quality can even be worse because this can really cost a lot of uh, can cost a lot of money. Um, some some more um, figures. Uh, I promise this will be. Um, I hope this will be almost the last figures that I I want to share with you. Uh, I, I want to talk with you about the um, the data experience. Um, how does poor data experience um, influence future um, um, business deals? So. Customers, they don't want to um, think about data experience. They want to have a shopping experience and not a data experience. This is very important. Um, regarding shopping experience, we must say that 62% of all online customers have had problems with the delivery um, during the last 12 months. So they are really not, obviously not happy with the buying experience um, at that time. Um, and from these customers, we have to see that um, 42 percent, um, they would rather cancel an order when they experience difficulties during data capturing. It's not comfortable entering my, my data. And if it's um, if my address doesn't fit into the um, into the lines, into the format, um, I'm really I'm really willing to cancel my order rather than continuing and going through this whole process. And even 33 percent say, um, if I experience these kind of difficulties during data capturing, I'm willing to purchase um, this product uh, with a competitor. I'm not willing to go through this bad um, data experience. Um, data is nothing our customers, um, um, the end client, wants to think about. They want to have a smooth um, um, customer journey, and that's it. Um, so these are the thoughts um, of um, of our end clients on uh, on. Customer data. So, what's what, what's important to understand is um, it's not. I mean, having um, data capturing or data experience is not a single shot for only one country. Um, companies operating globally, they have to understand that there are so many different um, 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 layers of data and um, layers, ex um, especially from when it comes to addresses. You have to see that there are two hundred forty countries and regions. Uh, there are more than 100 uh, different address formats and thousands of languages, dialects, um, characters, um, or 40 personal name formats. So it's huge. Um, so our understanding that our customers expect um, a smooth data experience, you have to, ex you have to combine this expectation uh, with a big task of all these different formats, countries, languages, and so on. So collecting personal data um, is the first impression um, that your customer will get from you. And this giving a good impression, to be honest, is not really, is not easy. Um, now we've talked too much about risks. I want to give you some um, uh, some examples of uh, chances. <clears throat> so why is offline data um, also relevant for online companies? Because people tend to ask, so why should um, the postal address be relevant for online shops? Um, if I order with an online shop, um, I make sure that the address is correct. Yes, that's that's right. But here's some, here's some, some figures. Um, if you understand that uh, with print mailings, um, an online shop achieves achieves um, eight percent higher shopping basket. That means a consumer who responds uh, to a print mailing from an online shop um, is willing to spend an average eight percent more uh, on this order than he did on the previous order. So this is a big, big, um, a big, big imp um, impact. That's, that's, that shows that print mailings, um, um, they don't only reactivate um, our customers, they also um, cause a much higher profitability 
and um, they they also provide a, a much larger um, shopping basket. Also, um, if you just use a print mailing um, before um, activating a, a, your online shop um, um, campaign, uh, we see that there's 4.9% uh, as, as an average conversion rate. So print mailings for existing customers um, of online shops, they have a higher conversion rate of 4.9%, just a, like a big, big trigger. And they make sure that the conversion rate uh, rises um, in average to 4.9%. Being this um, or combining these information, uh, what we learn on a, on a study from a CMC Dialog Post from 2020, um, there are, um, the return on advertising spend is about 990%. This is due to the fact that, um, I mean, despite um, having um, higher production cost for a print mailing, of course, print mailings um, are really profitable in combination with uh, online shop activities, um, thanks to the higher um, um, shopping basket and also thanks to the higher um, conversion rate. So every euro you invest into a print mailing and combine this with an online shopping event, um, every euro invested returns nine euro ninety. This is the result of a CMC dialog post study, uh, which I find um, uh, really uh, crazy, crazy to know. And this shows that um, offline um, offline information is um, it's a big, big chance, big trigger. But it has to be it has to be correct. You cannot achieve these um, um, these numbers um, with incorrect addresses. So. Summarizing this up, I, I, I always say we, we have to make sure that our clients understand the importance of up-to-date and accurate data. This is, this is the must. So if you want me to summarize, this is, this is the must. I, I, I mean, this is not my, my summary yet, but um, I must say this is very important. We have to keep this in mind. Um, data quality in total is one of the crucial factors of success for a company. Um, let me just summarize uh, top five reasons. There are many, many reasons why uh, taking care of your customer data quality is important, but let me summarize the five um, top five reasons for me. Number one, um, you want to make sure that you stay in touch with loyal customers and you secure a business relation. Um, remember the figures that, that we just talked about, how many people are moving and how many people are, are just sharing this information with the company. It's easy to lose the contract. So you have to make sure that you stay in touch with your loyal customer in order to stay secure as a business relation. Um, also, you have to be able to provide and deliver services, documents, goods. Um, this is everything. I mean, if you just don't know um, what to do, I mean, if you just don't know where to deliver, um, the reason probably is because your, um, your data is um, incomplete or is um, uh, not up to date, or is just simply incorrect. Um, so you have to be able to um, to make sure that you're able to um, provide and deliver everything you want to offer. Um, what comes with a, a poor data are um, high return uh, um, um, cost for returns processing. Have to avoid um, returns processing in general. Um, and this comes with um, a returns processing costs. I have just brought some some cases later, which uh, just indicate uh, the importance of or uh, the impact of um, of these returns processing costs. Um, of course, it's important to um, have an up to date um, customer data quality because the law, the GDPR, the KYC requirements, they require a high, high um, accuracy. You have to be compliant to the law, otherwise you get into really trouble or your business is not uh, worth uh, su uh, surviving, I, I promise. Um, and just in general, just try to prevent unnecessary mailings, wrong phone calls or bounced emails. This all comes um, with additional costs. I mean, sending out an unnecessary mailing um, to a deceased person or to a family of a deceased person, this is even worse. Um, this will cost money and will um, will destroy your reputation. It's really the worst thing, um, and you don't want to experience this. Reaction, customer reaction, um, is can be can be horrible. Um, what I just wanted to show you is, um, is um, this chart because um, this for me this is the the customer life cycle. 
and it shows um, um, it shows the importance and it shows the touch points um, um, of data quality throughout your customer life. First of all, you have to make sure that um, your customer data is, uh, is not a one-time shot. It's not on. It's not a, a problem solved during um, acquisition. And then you have it and it's done, and then you can survive. It's not that's not the case. It's a must throughout the whole customer life cycle. So let's start on the left. It's the acquisition phase um, when you're just getting into contact with your customer um, and you're starting to collect information. Make sure this is an easy experience for your customer and that you have the tools that support your um, um, your data quality. So maybe just use real-time validation tools, um, everything that, that, that goes with, um, uh, with automated filling, with auto-suggest forms. Uh, this can, um, everything can, can make uh, your business at the first start of acquisition very easy. Then I'm talking uh, the next step, I'm always explaining this as the, um, as the part where you want to evolve the customer relationship. You're just making business. It's your day-to-day -day business. But still, as you, as you just learned, um, as many people are learning and not everyone's, uh, as many people are moving and not everyone is, um, is uh, willing to inform you about this um, step, um, you have to be regularly um, um, active. So do a, a data cleansing. Do it on an international basis, on a national basis. But what you have to do is like postal validation. Uh, I mean, as I said, is there a change in the street name, which might be a bit uh, of a problem for future delivery. Um, also duplicate checks. Um, you have to check for movers. You have to check for disease. You have to check for, for undeliverable. Um, check the phone numbers before you just start um, um, a phone acquisition phase. Um, everything, check the email address, check the date of birth. Everything has to be checked regularly while you evolve the customer relationship. You have to grow with your, with your customer. Um, and the last phase, if you're just trying, I mean, if you're just losing to, uh, tending to lose your customer and the, uh, the customer life cycle seems to, seems to end, um, companies always try to reactivate the customers. So they're starting a campaign. Trying to update, and there we have to try to update your campaign. I mean, using the same tools as um, during um, the evolution um, phase. So this is this is kind of um, a short overview. When I'm talking about data cleansing or regular address checks, um, what's maybe what's maybe quite important is to understand that I mean, if you just put the letter um, in the center, you have to understand that you have to do address cleansing before you send a letter. Um, so before you send a letter, check, is my address still correct? OK, there's, there's the new address. I have a new address for this letter. So I send the letter to the correct address and not the wrong address. So do it before. And um, then as a forwarding company, I mean, you postal guys, you have the information. You have the real-time information. Use real-time information. If you just see, if your postman just sees, oh, this person moved from this house to that house, maybe the, the supplier of trust and he can deliver um, within uh, real time in a real time period and but I mean we also have to be honest and 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 uh, commit that uh, even if you're just doing all this cleansing or updating beforehand you will never reach a hundred percent so there will always come some post returns um, and um, you have to make sure that you handle these post returns there are also new processes I mean in Germany you have the chance to go to the official authorities and ask for addresses there. It's really expensive, and that's why the 20 euro came from the previous generation. But um, this is something you have to do afterwards. So if you see the process of address cleansing or address updating, it's before, during, and after um, sending a letter. Henning, we are only 10 minutes before our end, and we would like to ask some questions. Yes. Um, tell sure. you about the time. I see that you're very, very happy about uh, data quality, and you're very engaged about I'm, it. I'm addicted. <laughs> no, but I mean, of course, yes, questions. If you have, if you have questions, um, more than welcome. I think it would be great if you tell us this last case, the retailer case, because it's yeah. the case. I know that, and then we could go into some of the questions, maybe. Exactly. I, so he, I brought a retailer case. I'm, unfortunately, I'm not allowed to give uh, the name. This is um, from in my NDA, 
But um, this retailer case, what, what happens? It's a it's a customer. It's an international customer who wants to do custom, wants to do a mailing. So he he wants to do a mailing within seven countries, and he only wants to use one processor because he doesn't want to do with deal with all the countries, and he wants to do a five five time cleansing per year. So on the left, you see the the the, the big um, CRM database from the customer, and he's extracting um, the data for the relevant uh, countries. Um, so it was Canada, Germany. Uh, Switzerland, Belgium, France, Netherlands. He sent us all the data. Uh, we went with this data. Um, we did the cleansing either um, by ourselves or we used our strong partners in, the, um, in these uh, countries. We did the cleansing. And then what we did afterwards was the we did another re-validation. Uh, Check the data. doesn't make sense what we just uh, received from our partners because we want to really um, deliver premium quality. And then we did a remapping. Um, because our partners, they, they sent us data in their country format, but um, that's not the format that our customer used. So we have to do remapping and translate this information into the CRM database again for our customer. So in order to give him the final results and to make sure we have a mailing file that's mailable and reaches um, the seven countries and reaches all the customers that um, our client wants to. It's a big, uh, it's a big topic, and it's so uh, so efficient for for this um, client. Thanks a lot, Henning, for that presentation. And I think some right of the questions uh, we got, you already answered. So, for example, the question from Benedict: Are there differences between countries in the way to manage data? I think uh, that one was before Absolutely. your chart. It's two hundred forty countries and regions, and they yeah. all have different names and formats and all that. It's crazy. Another it's, it's crazy great. out there. I think this this picture you are just showing is making this very clear how how hard it is to do that in international campaign. Yes. One of the questions we got, um, and I'm switching over to us now, is um, uh, whether you can get secure databases in cooperation with banks or ministries or the state. And you said that in Germany, for example, there is something like that. So there's mm -hmm. a state database of addresses. Mm -hmm. um, how is it in other countries? What is your experience about that? Um, so if you just, for example, um, take um, um, our main our main source is the NC NCOA source, so the movers source that we get from the moving uh, person itself. So he's signing, he's giving us um, the information that he's moving from A to B and he's signing this. Um, and also we have in Germany these official authority um, offices where we can just um, go and, and ask for a new address. Um, to be honest, this is not. I mean, in in Europe, there are some. Uh, there are most of the countries in Europe. They are also very well organized. If you go to Eastern European countries, we also find it difficult to get a really uh, proper and um, a hundred percent field um, database. Um, and it's it's completely different. I figured out that this um, this idea of having an official um, um, of authority office and asking there for for information. Um, is not very common. You can find this Austria, in, in Austria, for example, in Switzerland as well. But um, this is not. I mean, this is the highest quality. Um, but you don't have. But you don't have this um, high quality. So, if we are looking for other countries, then one of the question is uh, from Olivier: is, uh, who, who, whom do you work with? So, if there's no state database, are you worth mm -hmm. working with other postal operators or? Absolutely. What exactly. Are you, yeah. Yes. Exactly. We're we're dealing with uh, our our partners are the are the strongest partners in uh, are the strongest companies or forwarding companies um, in these um, in, in the states. It's for example, it's Biznote, it's EDM, it's uh, Royal Mail, um, and so on and so on. So we're just we're we're screening all the markets. We're just trying. We're checking the quality of all the available um, data. From all the suppliers in each and every country, and then we pick the strongest. Uh, sometimes we pick two, and then we say, "Okay, let's have a contract. We are your reseller for your database." And uh, of course, we get um, a nice discount because we're collecting a lot of um, information. Um, but this is this is the way it works. Um, we're not collecting data ourselves. Um, we're working with strong partners in these countries. And if you're looking into the process, there's a question about how is it done? Are there any tools for DPA validation, for remapping, and all the things you told us about? Um, is it something where you can get on a market and buy the tool, or is, did you develop yeah. your own tools, or what are you doing there? Um, uh, both. Um, um, some kind of, uh, customers, but 
to be honest, these are really big players. They develop their own tools. Um, 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 small and medium enterprises, they um, they try to buy software that's available on the market. We have our own software. Um, our uh, One of our companies is the Arbis um, company. It's a software um, company, and they specialize on, on, um, on this kind of uh, software. But there are other players, like Uniserf is there, for example. Um, the market is, there's a wide, wide range um, um, of, um, of all these. Also, Locate, um, there's so many um, suppliers of, uh, of software. You just have to um, check um, what you want. I mean, um, do you also, is it, um, is, it, um, um, is it reliable or is it, um, is it possible to use this software on an international basis? What we also figured out, some softwares are just also only just um, um, uh, built for, for one national solution. And if you just have a different format, um, you can't use the, the software for this, uh, for this um, purpose. Then we have a totally other question about, uh, do you get help from the delivery uh, um, postal delivery. So, if a postman or woman goes to a house and sees that somebody's moved, uh, give they feedback to you? Do you use this data? It's great. Yeah, that's this is a very good question. Uh, of course, this is um, this is a question. Um, um, we, we we call it um, our real time information. Um, sometimes we what we also do is like a, a quality check. You know, um, if we, for example. Um, um, do address research um, and we go to an official um, authority and we just receive the information okay um, Mr. Mr. X he, he moved from A to B and um, so before we sell this information to our client we do a quality check because even if it's an official authority the quality is not always a hundred percent so what we do we give this information to our um, to our uh, mother company to our Deutsche Post and we say please double check and then there's a forwarding person, uh, and he's he's taking this letter, this address, and he's checking: is this a, is a, is he really um, now moving? Did, did he really move to this address? And only if he says, "I confirm," then we sell the information to our client. We Very want to make sure it's a it's a one hundred percent quality. Otherwise, um, you I mean, you can get data um, wherever you look, um, but you want to make sure that you deliver premium quality, and this is. This is how we do it. We work with uh, with these um, delivering forwarding companies. And uh, premium quality brings to another question um, uh, about the structure. And you said in the beginning that you are a very profitable company and that you are a subsidiary of Deutsche Post. So what mm -hmm. would you recommend other postal operators in the world if they want to develop a, a service like yours, a business line even like yours, mm -hmm. uh, would you recommend to, to do that in their in their company or to build up a subsidiary like you did? Uh, you, you're already a partnership with another company. Why that? So mm -hmm. what about the business part of the of you? Yeah, so uh, what, what I recommend, I mean, you, you have the, I mean, you have the uh, information, you are doing the, the supply, you're doing the delivery. So you, you can start collecting um, information every day, every day starting to collect. Don't, don't try to think um, globally um, on, the, on the first step if you just want to start building, but become um, the biggest player on your, your country, your market. Um, try to collect as much data as possible and then do a check um, start small um, um, don't try I, I mean really start small just start with address um, is the format correct um, is this is the spelling correct is the um, is the name has the name changed from as I said Mozart Street to Beethoven Street so these are of course first small steps um, but this is how you start growing and and then uh, try to do um, try to do more um, more and more that's that's my recommendation. I always see like companies they want to do everything and they want to just they want to um, um, sell um, a real time validation tool um, without having knowledge about um, data. This is crazy, really. Mm. And do you think it's better to do that in a subsidiary, or would you recommend to do that as part of the uh, as part of the main postal operator? As you are in a subsidiary, yeah. I think you you get at least some of the advantages, maybe. Um, Yes, I mean, but this is a this is a, um, a different story. Where we are a subsidiary, it's like I mean, you can also do it as uh, as part of your main company. It's not a problem. I mean, it's like um, 
it's not a special business. Of course, it's a certain unit, but you ha don't have to um, create a subsidiary. It's a different unit, just dealing with addresses, um, dealing, uh, dealing with um, um, customer data and information. The reason why we are a subsidiary is, um, I mean, um, in 1994, um, um, one of the CEOs of Bertelsmann, um, so the 49% um, shareholder, um, he had this idea. He, he asked himself, so why don't we sell movers information? Why can't we sell movers information? We are selling books. And we are sending books wherever, um, and they are all returning. Why can't we just update our database and sell this information? So he had the idea of the business, and he said, I have a sales team here. So he went to the to Deutsche Post, and he asked, uh, what do you guys think about, about my idea? Let's make a deal. And okay, this is how that it started. was the he, history. Yeah, exactly. He had, he had the idea of the business. And the information, the data information, is uh, is of course um, within uh, Deutsche Post. We have two last questions. Uh, mm -hmm. One was about the collecting of the right data for the right purpose. So, how do you decide, um, or how you can check your data that uh, that you know which data to collect as a as a data cleaning operation? Um, mm -hmm. How do you decide on that? I mean, it's 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 quite simple. Also, there. Um, um, figure out what you want. If you want to have, um, if you want to um, focus on, a, let's say, email campaigns, um, if you want to make sure you, you're starting email campaigns, um, um, asking for an email address um, has to be mandatory in your um, the data capturing process. And um, otherwise, it, it, it doesn't work. So make sure what you want and then um, Try to to collect, um, but also have a um, have a, um, a checked uh, ha have the data checked every time mm -hmm. you to get the data in. Um, for email, for example, don't have, I mean, don't create a Mickey Mouse email address. It doesn't make mm -hmm. sense. You want to make you want to send a um, 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 really um, nicely created um, email campaign to a Mickey Mouse address. Um, this is probably not the best way to create conversion rate. Last question. We have a bunch of questions around the privacy. Um, I think I think some of your your data are probably not privacy related because they are not person related. If we have a street name, mm -hmm. it's not personal data. If we have a postcode, it's not personal data. Mm -hmm. But other data probably is personal data. Like I am moving from A to B. I would mm -hmm. say that is personal mm -hmm. data. So how are you going around that? Um, whether this is um, uh, GDPR um, or other legal legal yeah. things. As, so absolutely, absolutely correct. And this is all a personal data. An email address is personal data. Moving to a new place is a personal data. The reason, the question is, why are we allowed to use this personal data? And the answer is, um, on the one hand, we get this information directly from the moving um, person. Because this mover, um, he said, um, uh, dear Deutsche Post, um, please make sure that I receive all my letters um, to my new address. And here's my new address. And by the way, you are allowed to use my data and give it to business partners if you want and sell my data. So, and he signs this contract. And this is about like in Germany, as I said, like 8 million people are moving. 5 million people are just giving us the, their information willingly, signing. Good, so yeah. they are okay with us. The other information that we received is um, information that we collect from um, official authorities. Um, but the official authorities, they ask for a reason. So you have to have a reason. And one reason is, for example, um, this person um, um, owes me money. Um, I just have an open invoice and uh, I'm a debt collector. And this reason is like um, is, um, is enough to, for this um, official authority to hand over the, um, the data. Also, I mean, it's quite easy if you just look, if you just Google or just go to the phone book or just go to other official accessible sites. So many people are sharing, officially sharing the information. And if they're officially sharing, um, it's not worth protecting. And then it's, it's okay to collect. Thanks a lot, Henning. I think we answered okay. all the questions during the coming. And I, I think you saw that your topic is really interesting for, for our audience. So thanks a lot for sharing your thoughts and sharing your presentation. And um, mm -hmm. I was very happy to have you here. And thanks yeah. to UBU, uh, thanks to you. And for all of you, we have a next innovation talk. And that is not very far away now. 
Um, on the, let me see, I don't, but I don't say it wrong. On the 16th of February, we have the next innovation talk. Of course, you will all get invitations as, again. And our next um, speaker will speak about the possibilities of collecting data from the internet, official data about companies, and to use this as a B2B uh, marketing tool and uh, how, to, how to use that. So it's a very interesting, very artificial intelligence and big data topic, which is very interesting. So I hope to see all of you again on the 16th of February. Again, 9 o'clock and 6 p.m. And uh, I hope you have a good day and see you later. Bye-bye. Thanks, Henning. Thank you very and much. Bye-bye to everybody. Bye-bye.